Diane and I'm with Phil Sewing Virtual Club. Today we're going to show you how to make a rope basket. Here's an example uh, of of the the basket that I made. Okay, and here are the coasters that fit inside the basket. After um, we're through or completed with uh, uh, making the basket, um, then we're going to embroider a design that's built into the Solaris. One of the new designs that came with the, the Vision upgrade, and it's one of those long designs. That's what they call it, a long stitch design, because it takes long sweeping um, steps to and pulls it, you know, the thread to create that long effect um, with the design itself okay so before we get started we're going to talk a little bit about the different products that we're using for the basket okay um, these baskets or this basket and I can move this here ball of yarn out of the way and this basket and this basket right here they were all used or made using a 732nd clothesline cotton rope, okay? This I bought on Amazon, and of course, you can find these possibly at, at some of the, the local stores in your neighborhood, you know. And what this is, it's, um, uh, it's clothesline core or rope, 732nd. 730 seconds wide and it's a 200 yard spool or container with that much. and you can also you know find different ropes as well that I'm sure will will do just as well and you know the thing is once you get started doing this you're going to want to experiment with different types of uh, cord okay just to expand your creative uh, ability with this uh, with this here uh, concept okay um, this is um, on here it even tells you what it's about okay uh, how it's made it's a synthetic core for strength and it also has um, you know the cotton outer edges that's how it's created it's with the cotton thread or the cotton cord uh, but then it's got that uh, synthetic core inside it to, you know and of course in the olden days and maybe some people still do it today they they use these to hang up their clothes and so you want to make sure that 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 cord was good and that's why they put that 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 core center in there to make sure that the elements the rain the sunlight and so forth don't break it down and it lasts for a good long time um, and so of course making these here little um, baskets you're going to find that uh, these baskets are, are going to be nice and uh, sturdy and they're going to hold up for a long period of time as well okay uh, what I did with this one this is the the product that I used here Evandale cotton clothesline what I did with it is I rolled it into a ball like you were if you were using yarn for the first time I rolled a big old ball because sometimes the the cord can get tangled up and so I made it so that it it unrolls off the off the ball here nice and smoothly and it doesn't tangle as you're working around and creating your bowl sometimes they do get little kinks in it you'll have to work out those kinks as you go as well uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is the thread that I use. Um, here again, I experimented with different types of thread. The thread we're going to use today is a Madeira. Uh, this one is a 40 weight thread. It's, uh, it's not a real heavy thread but it is cotton okay and that's one thing I want to remind everybody use the cotton threads you know because if you choose to dye the threads as well or to dye your bowl and I haven't dyed any here but you know you can use dye to uh, dye your cording which is kind of fun to do too it gives it a little bit more personality and so forth as well but back to the threads so this one is the Madeira I also use like a, um, a metler heavier weight thread and what I did with this thread is I used it on the big basket and I used a zigzag stitch that was built into the machine and this gives it a little more uh, of a durability uh, factor with your bowl uh, the bowl itself is stiffer 
and it, it the edges around it that's what I mean it's stiffer and it's gonna be a little bit more sturdy of a basket whereas this one I used um, I used a 40 weight thread and it's a little bit more pliable and that's a all okay I mean it kind of depends upon you and how um, uh, your end result what you're going to use the basket for as well okay and uh, as you as you get into this you're going to find out when you're stitching these out you know they're pretty solid you know it, it's not that movable and this was using the the 40 weight thread um, and so that's a finer thread and just remember your your thread comes you know the lower the number of the thread the heavier the thread so just keep that in mind when you when you go to the store to purchase different thread uh, you know cotton threads that is okay but I use cotton thread throughout the whole projects okay that I've been working on okay so anyway I'm gonna put this one on the side uh, next thing we're going to talk about is uh, uh, different stitches that you can utilize on the machine to uh, assemble your basket uh, like I said this one I used a zigzag stitch and on the one we're using today I used um, here I'll show you I used uh, here it is I'm going to be using uh, a feather stitch on this one okay so it's kind of your choice to, to experiment with some of the decorative stitches as well in the machine and you're going to get a completely different look to it and of course change up your thread colors as well uh, I'm using threads that, that pretty much match and uh, you know and sink into the fibers of the basket because I wanted it to look more natural in its setting but in other situations you could do something like this you know you could use a decorative thread right here and then I used the solid thread on the bottom and then I came up here and used a, a colored thread up here to give it a little bit more dimension as well you can see as well yeah, what I did here is I used an embroidery design to stitch on the base of the, the basket itself. So, but you can you can kind of experiment with different options uh, as such. Um, some other options you might choose to, to utilize is using something like with a where you wrap your basket or you wrap your uh, cording before you stitch it so you can use a bigger piece smaller pieces longer pieces it's kind of your choice because it, it kind of makes a, a bold statement then and you're going to just wrap the 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 fabric around the cording itself and then you're going to butt it up to one another and then you're going to get a completely different look as well so you can add little color splotches within the basket itself so you can kind of imagine you know maybe you have a red splotch here of color and a blue splotch there and use utilizing different fabrics you know would be a, a great way to do it so here here's one where you know it's a check black and white check or or green whatever it might be you know you can just kind of experiment and this is a good time to use up some of your scrap fabrics as well okay um, so we talked about different uh, uh, stitch options and so you could definitely utilize any stitch options one thing that I found is you want to make sure that your width is set at 5.5 or, or 6 even so that it so that it, when you when you're stitching them together such as this that it catches both sides both wraps on the rope so you want to catch this side you want to catch the opposite side as well and there again you can also adjust your your length of the stitch so depending upon um, how much focus or how how secure you want that um, the basket assembled uh, in this one I had it set this basket back here I had it set at 2.5 for the length and um, on others on this one I had it set a little closer together which was I think was like about 1.6 or 1.8 somewhere 
in that neighborhood. Okay. So, but th those type of things are all negotiable based upon the end result and the thread that you're using. So this particular one, you're not going to see that stitch as much as something where if you were to use like a, a, a blue thread, okay, or even a yellow thread or a red thread. So um, you just might want to just experiment as well with the thread colors and the stitching. And so what I, I tend to do is I cut a piece of rope relatively long, you know, maybe uh, 18 inches long. And then I started experimenting with the style of stitch that I'm going to use. And then you can also experiment with the color that you want to use. So don't, uh, you know, uh, think you only have to use the thread that that uh, coordinates with it. You could definitely use, um, you know, a, a, a contrast in your threads, you know, as well to, to give it that extra special look, you know, and, as well. Another thing that uh, I was using, um, or I wanted to do, I should say, I bought some rip dye and I wanted to, you know, and you can buy any any color dye as well. And so then you can color your basket. So this is why it's important that you use a, a, a cotton thread so that it dyes your thread as well as your rope okay and so you can create like an umbro effect and I thought that that was a really pretty option and I didn't get around to doing that yet but I'm going to try that for my next basket is to is to dye maybe just the top area of the basket itself and then what it'll do is it'll soak in that dye will soak into your fibers and it'll it'll seep down into the fibers and and create that umbro effect you know which is kind of cool or you could dye the whole basket too so i mean there's so many options that you can utilize uh with these baskets okay okay so i'm going to take my ball of uh of rope and i'm going to set that off to the on the floor to the on the right side of me. Okay, so I'm going to set that down on the floor and then I'm going to take the end and I'm going to trim away the end of that rope. There was a little plastic uh, tape or whatever that was um, that was wrapped around the end and uh, so you want to remove that that portion of the uh, of the rope itself. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start to coil the rope. I'm going to bend in that center, a nice tight coil, okay? And as I do this, you can see my hand gets in the way, and I apologize for that. But once you start to coil, you're going to hold that center down so it's nice and flat, okay? Then you're going to grab a pin after you get your coil started. And this will help hold the coil together. So you're going to push that pin in so it holds that center coiled section. You're going to continue to wrap to create that coil. So if you make a mistake or if you can't get that tight enough in the center just go really slow here and like I uh, I think I mentioned it this is like the hardest part of making these rope baskets is making sure that center is nice and tight and so once you get that in there continue to coil You're taking your time because you want to make sure that this part is uh, nice and tight to another pin to hold the next layer in place. And you may have to bend the pins a little bit as you work your way around. Use as many pins as you'd like to hold this in place. Okay, work your way around. And you're gonna work your way around until it becomes like a, about an inch, inch and a half across. Okay. When you get a big enough section, 
And you're going to you're going to take this pin out and then reattach it, holding that section down. Okay, another pin. We need to put one down here at the this area right here. Being careful that you don't poke yourself. Okay. And I think we pretty much have it. Okay. Now in that center you want to you can use your stiletto here. You know, these work really well to help hold everything in place. Okay. Put that in there. Okay. Now uh, next thing we're going to do is to stitch a big X across the center of it and then we'll repeat rotating it to create a star effect. So you're going to do straight across, up and down, create the, the cross, and then go at the diagonal. Okay. So we're going to choose our stitch. Okay, we're going to use a straight stitch for this particular uh feature to, to, to stitch across. So I'm going to choose 103 for my straight stitch and then uh, your length, if you feel like 2.5 is too wide and you want a little bit uh, more uh, holding ability, you might decrease this down to 2.0 for your stitch length. And then you're going to hold it in place and put it underneath your presser foot, okay, okay, and then you're going to go back and take a couple back stitches as well with this button right here. I'm going to go all the way across to the opposite side. Making sure your rope stays in place. When you get to the back section, back stitch, and then go ahead and cut the thread. Okay, once you've done that, rotate it to create that, that stitch across the opposite side. Make sure that your pins, okay, a couple back stitches here as well to hold this in place. Making sure, like I said, you know that you remove any pins that might um, strike your needle because you don't want to run over those with your machine. Go ahead and repeat or with the back stitch here. Cut your thread. Okay. Now if you need to trim away any of your excess threads so that they don't get caught on the back side. If you need to turn it over and go ahead and trim those threads away because you don't want those to be shown on your on your basket okay now we're going to do that diagonal stitch creating that star effect repeat again for the back space this is going to give that that base a really stop solid Fill or a stitch here to hold it all together. I'm going to hold this down, making sure your layers on the coiled uh, base here are all butted up to one another. And cut your thread. Turn away any excess threads. Okay, that you might have again. And you're going to then again remove any pins that might be in the way. You don't want to 
stitch over them. Okay, and you're going to make your last pass. Oops, kind of went fast there. You should definitely go as slow as you possibly need to. And go ahead and reverse again. Cut your thread. Okay. And trim away any other threads that might be in the middle or on the back side. Okay. Now, the next thing is we're going to start to sew the, um, the layers or the, the coils together. I'm going to move these pins. Okay. So we're going to select a different stitch now. Okay, so I'm going to go to category two, and I'm going to select 2.12, which is a feather stitch. I'm going to adjust the width on my feather stitch to about, I'm going to increase it, it's set at default set at 5.0. I'm going to increase that up to about 5.5. You can choose either 5.5 or 6.00 millimeters wide. Um, and that's going to depend upon the width of your rope, okay, that you're utilizing. Um, and so this is five or seven thirty seconds uh, inch rope. And so I, I found that 5.5 .5 works really well, okay. And then we're also going to adjust the length. The length can be adjusted downward. I'm going to put that at about 2.0. So that makes the, the stitches a little closer together to hold uh, the base, uh, you know, as you go around um, a little bit more sturdy in its uh, presentation. Uh, so now when you put this under your foot, okay, you're going to have the rope or the tail of the rope coming out to a, on, towards the right side of you, okay? Now, what I like to do is I start it out, and if you notice on your foot itself, and I'm going to just remove this a second here to show you this. On the foot itself, there is little markings on it. Right here is a little marking right in the center of that foot. Um, if you keep the center of or this marking on the foot centered between the two ropes, which would be about right in here, the valley, where those two ropes meet as you're coiling them around, would be right in there. If you keep that marking on the foot centered over that area, you're going to be um, catching both sides of that rope. So I'm going to go ahead and put this foot back on. Okay. And we're going to start inward a little bit from where uh, the rope ended. Okay, right there. And I'm going to center that line centered in that valley where the two ropes come together. So I'm going to lower that down. And you want to go slow with this when you first start out. And it's, it's a good time just to get the feel of how that's going to stitch and how fast and how, how quickly you have to move this unit around. So when you, when you get to this area or past the area where it's first, uh, uh, where your star stitches were, were made, you know, you're going to want to make sure that you're really careful and you go slow, turn the coil as you make it around there, making sure that this tail is snug up against the prior coil. And you can see I'm just working around here, and it's catching both ropes, the inner rope and the outer rope, and you continue to coil and to turn that rope. 
And it's a good idea to keep this uh, stiletto close by, and it helps helps uh, move that outer rope in towards that uh, the base a little bit better to maintain that tightness that you need to maintain when you're going around in, in the circle. So you're going to continue in this fashion until your base of your um, the base here is about five or so inches wide. Now one thing I, I forgot to mention earlier with, with all the supplies that you know needed for, for this project, I forgot to mention what needle sizes that you should be using. When I did my first basket, you know, everyone was saying, oh, you need a real, real heavy duty needle. In your for your needle here uh, for stitching. Well, I broke several jean needles doing this, and I thought, wow, that didn't work. So I continued to go smaller with my needles, the size of the needle itself, and I ended up with a size 75, 11 size needle, and I found that needle worked the best. And you would have thought it would have just been the opposite, but it wasn't. It's so that 75 needle worked the best for me. So again, experiment on your own, and you'll, you're going to find what works best for you and your machine. So everybody, all machines are different. Let's let's face it, and so they all, you know, um, uh, will work best with certain needles and certain threads. And so if you're going to use a lighter thread, use a smaller needle size needle as well. But uh, yeah, I found the 7511 was the was the needle of for me of, of my choice, and that's what I have in here today as well. You can see I'm just picking up speed a little bit here, and I'm going to just stop here a second. I'm going to stop it in the down position, the needle. Okay, what what I did here in this situation with this uh, with this uh, uh, coaster, I made I believe it was one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven. I made eleven coils from the center outward, and that gave me a bat or a, a coaster that was about um, you know the five inch size coaster that we're going to be using in our basket. So we're going to continue on with this until I have five inches in the width of the coaster or approximately 11 coils around the outer edges as we're going through. So after I, I'm going to continue on with stitching this and I'll, I will um, catch back up with you again as soon as I get to that five inch mark. Now I'm getting close to that ending point. I'm going to stop with my needle in the down position. I'm going to take my measuring tool and I'm going to see how close I am to the finish. Okay, what I did is I, I put it at five inches because that's how the depth of, that I want my my coasters for the to be. Okay, but approximately that size. Okay, so now what I want to do is, if I were making another coaster, and we definitely could do another coaster, but uh, this here particular one is going to turn out to be my bowl, okay? So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to stop right here because it's... Um, well, it's about five. That this is the, the 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 stopping point if I were going to make a coaster. Okay. Okay. So since I want the coaster to fit in the base 
of the of the bowl that I'm creating, I want it to be a little bit larger around. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another um, round, uh, making it a little bit larger than five inches around that base of the bowl, so that my coasters fit in, uh, set inside the bowl very, uh, you know, uh, nicely. Okay. So we're going to make this a little bit bigger. So maybe what I'll do is I'll go maybe twelve rounds of the rope going around. Okay, let's push that down. Let's measure, see where we're at. Oh, it's still at about five, so we're gonna keep going here. Won't be too much longer, and we'll we'll call it the end for the bowl with uh, with the decorative stitches to hold my coils together, and then we'll proceed on to. Um, doing the embroidered portion of the bowl. So just a few more stitches here. Let's see how this is looking to me. Oh. Well, it's getting a little bit bigger around, so I think we'll continue a little bit further. A bit too much longer, and we'll have it done. Let's try it now, see where we're at. Okay, I think we're there. Okay. So at this point in time, I want to um, I want to end up with my needle over on this section right there. And I'm going to reverse it. Oops, I wanted to go a little bit further, so sorry. We're gonna have to go a little bit further. I didn't want it to knot off in the center right here. Okay, right here. So what I'm going to do is press this button up here, and I want to knot it off, okay, so that it holds it together. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is lift my presser foot, and I'm going to leave a string about this length right there. And I'm going to tie a knot here at this point in time. Okay, so what I did is I brought the, the string to the back side. I'm going to tie a knot to end it. Another to secure it. Okay, and then remove that excess amount of stitches. Or thread, sorry. Okay. So there we are. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to set up for embroidery, okay? And I will be back in a second, okay? After I set up and put my embroidery arm on the sewing machine itself, okay? And I'll be right back. Hi. Um, now that I've got the embroidery unit attached to the machine, okay, I've also um, hooped my stabilizer. I used a a tearaway stabilizer and then I placed my um, center coiled section you know which is going to be the bottom of my uh, here, I'll get the basket it's this portion it's facing up and this is facing towards the right okay and we did not cut this as you can see because after we're through embroidering we're going to continue on creating uh, the sides of our basket okay so uh, what I did then is I also used because uh, I didn't want to use a sticky uh, stabilizer on it because sometimes a sticky stabilizer gums up your needle and I get it that you can use a different kind of needle to for for that situation but I'm using the same needle the 7511 needle okay and 
I also used um, a double-sided sticky tape, which is just double-sided tape. I put four pieces, one at the top side and at the bottom, and I pressed it down to secure the, the basket bottom in the hoop itself, okay? So now I put it kind of on the top left corner of the hoop because in hopes of uh, down here, after I create another coaster, then I would do the other coaster down in this corner of the, of the, the hoop itself, okay? So I'm pretty well set here. So what I'm going to do is attach my hoop. Okay, lock it into place. Okay, and I just I just keep pressing on this spot to make sure that it holds it in place there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go in there and we're going to select our design. So we're going to go to embroidery. And you've got your categories under embroidery, um, you know, different designs and so forth. Uh, the newest category that was added with the uh, latest upgrade to the Solaris, turning it into the Vision, is category 8. And these are those long design stitches, okay, or long stitch designs, something, I think that's what they, they call it, okay. Now, in here, there's different options that you can utilize. Uh, as you can see, there's like 10 different designs that are all based on that same option of that long stitch, okay. Uh, now, we can choose the first design. This particular design is, if you notice up here, is 5 inches by 4.95. Now that might be a little too um, too large for the for that center of our uh, basket or our, or our rope bowl. So I'm going to say, no, I don't want that design. The second design, that one is only 2 inches, so that one is too small. Okay, uh, and then the third one, I sound like um, the three bears here with too small, too big, and just right, you know. So I'm going to select the third design, which is 3.67. It's a little over three and a half inches, you know, in its dimension. Okay, so we're going to select that one because I think it'll fit very nicely. Um, in the center of, of our bowl. So of course, you know, if you were to make a different size rope bowl, you can make adjustments according to the sizes of our designs and, and select the size of the design and then um, make your base of your bowl um, to, to, to work within those dimensions. Because these particular designs are not resizable. So you have to rely on the size that it is originally. There's no sizing involved, and I'll show you that in a second. So I selected the third design, click on set to place it. Okay, uh, there it is in the middle of our uh, workspace. Okay, uh, now if I come into edit, everything is grayed out as you can see. So there's no movement, there's no rotating, there, there's, there's not much um, editing options with this. You can rotate it, but um, you can't size it. So, uh, and that is, it's all based upon the way that design was digitized from the, from the very beginning. So so to get the best results, they say, no, we're going to stitch it out and leave those designs, the, the, the particular sizes that they come in as, and you cannot, um, uh, you know, veer from, from that action. Okay. So anyway, we're going to go back to embroidery, ensure that there's enough space and enough bobbin thread to completely stitch the design, as it is impossible to get satisfactory results if either thread runs out. So I have a full bobbin in there, and I have my spool of thread um, ready to go. I still need to thread it, but uh, we'll get there in a second. So I say okay to all those things. Now, to get the design into the position so that it embroiders on top of the center of the bowl, I'm going to just kind of move the design, and you can see how the the hoop itself is moving based upon where I place that design. 
okay? So now to fine tune that placement, right now it's not too far off, but it's not perfect yet, okay? So I can either put my little beam light on and it'll point to the center mark where that design will start centering and show you the center of that design. I hope that shows up on, on film. Uh, but that beam will, will help you out there. Another way to help you is if you click on the camera. It says, please wait a while. And so now what happens is it puts a red box in the center of the workspace. Now what it's doing is it's projecting that design down onto the workspace where it's going to embroider. So we're going to move that box so that we, we can see this a little bit better. I'm going to move that box right up into that area. Okay. Now, it projects that design onto the area so I can manipulate and maneuver the design a little bit so that it is centered right over the center point on that design. And I'm going to just move it up. Oops, went too far over. Oops. And if you do this, guess what? You can, let's see, what did I move? Oops, I moved the box. So we're going to put the design back up here. Let's say okay to that. And here it is. I touched the wrong button, and so what happened is it moved the design. And that could happen to you as well. So just to, to be reassured that, hey, you know, nothing is... Nothing is forever with this machine until you hit the go button. Okay, so let's go ahead and repeat those actions. So I'm going to go up to my camera again. Okay, let's move the box into place. Oops. There we go. Okay, so now what I did is I hit the center button, you know, and it put the design back into center position. And so I have to watch what I'm doing here so that I don't do that again for this design anyway. Oops. So you can manipulate and move that around. I'm going to move it over that way a little bit okay and then once once you you say that hey this is the positioning that I want I'm going to say okay to it and then I'm going to click on this little um, W right up here it's with that beam it, it shoots that beam right down in the center and that confirms that everything looks great okay so we're going to say okay to this and our first thread that I'm going to use because I, I'm staying within the blue family so I'm going to do a lighter blue for the center and the darker blue on the outer edges. So I'm going to thread my machine. Oops, it's a little bit of a reach. Oops. Put my needle up and thread the machine. Okay, that all looks good. Okay, so we're pretty much ready. We've got a green light here ready saying that hey, everything is good to go. So, one thing though, before I go any further. Uh, I'm going to go into my um, uh, machine settings and take a peek at something, okay? Uh, embroidery speed is set at 1,050 stitches per minute, okay? I want to slow that down to about, let's go to about 400 stitches per minute, SPM stitches per minute, and because I want to make sure, because we're 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 embroidering through a thicker uh, material than what it normally embroiders through, so I want to slow it down, and I'm going to watch it to make sure that everything is going good, okay, and that we get a great stitch each and every time. So I'm going to say okay to that. Now I'm going to go ahead and 
Hit the start button. Making sure that the end of your rope is off to the right side. And stitching that first color. And that's going to take about a minute to stitch out, which is pretty fast because these are not big designs. So they do stitch relatively fast, even at these slower embroidery speeds. Okay, the first color is complete. So now we're going to go ahead and change thread colors to our darker blue. Okay, let's see if I can reach this. Better stand to get this one. Okay. Thread your machine. Sorry. Okay. Let's put the thread back. There we go. And green again, so we're ready to go. <coughs> Excuse me. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut that little tail because I don't want it to get caught underneath my stitches. So I'm going to cut that tail and start the machine up again. <clears throat> These are very, very pretty stitches, you know. Pretty design. Um, it's great for uh, a project such as this. You have to always be careful because you can see how long that thread pulls out. And you don't want that thread to get caught underneath um, any item. So um, perfect for a coaster or for the bottom of that basket as well. Notice how slow that machine is going again. Now it's pulling those threads. And this particular uh, color will take about six minutes to embroider out, going at that 400 stitches per minute speed. And I... Um, I'm using that same needle, that 7511 needle that I use for uh, stitching the rows together. And you can notice how well it's stitching. It definitely likes the smaller needle. But there again, like I said earlier, you know, if your machine uh, prefers the heavier needle, go for it. Um, you know, that may take a little bit of um, uh, trying it out and seeing what works best for you in your machine. If you notice on the machine itself over here, it has a slide bar showing you how far you are along in your design. Um, that's always a nice feature to to see the the progress that you're making. We're about halfway done with this particular color. Okay, we're coming to the end of our last little um, section of the embroidered design. 
Okay. I also wanted to mention the thread that I'm using for this project was a Madeira frosted mat thread. Uh, that thread um, works well for a project such as this because it doesn't have the sheen to it. It's, it's not a shiny thread. Um, and um, it's a little bit thicker as well. It's like a 35 weight thread, okay? So here we are. We're all completed with our design, okay? I'm going to say okay to it. And just a reminder as well, the bobbin thread that I used was an embroidery pre-wound bobbin thread that I put in, okay? So now uh, we're going to just remove the embroidery unit because we're completed. And this is how our design looks. I think it did a great job with centering it. If you count around one, two, three, four, we've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, four rings around the actual design. So it did a, a really great job with, with embroidering. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to remove um, the embroidered section from the... Um, here we go. That's what I was looking for. I just wanted to to cut the stabilizer rather than tearing it because let's face it, these stitches are kind of delicate in their nature. So what I'm going to do is I'm ripping it. And I, I'm not ripping it close to the design at all. And then plus I have my sticky tape back there. So I'm going to set this aside. And this is what the back side looks like. So now when you when you tear or remove that stabilizer, I'm going to say be very careful when you rip it away because these stitches are as long on the back as they are on the front. Okay? So when you turn it over, I want you to hold like right in there, right at the tip of one of those little mountains. I'm going to call them mountains, uh, peaks. And then... Pull the thread gently away. And you're going to repeat that all the way around the design. Holding your thumb in place there. Hope you can see that. I know sometimes my fingers get in the way. And hold your thumb there to, to secure those stitches so that you don't pull those stitches out. And make sure you remove that tape as well, a double-sided sticky tape. Okay, stick it to my fingers. Um, make sure you hold it as you rip it away. Okay, be very careful here so it doesn't rip out those stitches. It's another piece of that sticky tape. We want to make sure we remove that because when we go back to the sewing machine, we don't want that sticking to the bed of the of the machine. So that's the back side. Okay. This is the front. Any more pieces? Just you can fine tune some of those, tearing them away later as well. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go back in. We're going to switch over to to the uh, to the sewing unit, um, and then stitch up the side of our of our basket of our bowl. Okay, and I'll be right back. Okay, I have my, my machine set up for sewing again. But before we go any further, I wanted to uh, run something by you or address a situation that I had when I uh, embroidered this design out for the first time on this on this uh, um, surface, okay, on this materials. Uh, one thing I found is, you know, this is thicker than a cotton fabric would be. So 
what I found is I needed to adjust the height of the presser foot when it's in embroidery that is okay to to allow for that difference here so I went into settings okay and then I went to page seven I believe and let's see not on seven so it must be on eight okay the embroidery foot height I made an adjustment so I raised that foot the default setting is at 0 0.060 as you can see there, it's in black. So it's easy to put things back to their default settings because they always um, uh, indicate it as such, like this in that situation. So I raised my embroidery foot height up to 0 0.100, okay. And so that's for embroidery only, but I wanted to make sure I let you know about that. After I raised that embroidery foot height, then guess what happened? And you could see that as well. No threads broke at all for this particular stitch out. Okay. So, but if you have that occurring, you know, and you're thinking or stitching or embroidering on thicker, thicker materials such as this, you may find yourself increasing the height of that of that foot okay and um, so right now well we can take it back to its normal setting because right now we're not going to stitch any more of these out unless you know um, you know we we decide to do another coaster but you know we're not going to do it in this setting so anyways click OK to it then we're going to take you back to the setting where we were where we were stitching these together so I went to number two and I clicked on 2.12 which is the feather stitch I had it set at 5.5 and the length at 2.0 okay so I'm going to maintain that same stitch length and width when we stitch the side of our bowl okay so stitching the side of the bowl we're going to continue on where we left off we're going to put the unit underneath the foot lower your presser foot okay and what you're going to do with this is you're going to bend this or hold this not really bending but you're going to force it up closer to the machine okay so and you're going to continue with it in that position until the sides are completed okay make sure you have enough for the the cord okay all unwound and you're going to start holding this up and your other hand your right hand is going to guide the the extra rope or feed it into the to the basket or the rope basket that we're creating okay then start out slow again so you've got to think about holding using your left hand to hold up the unit or the little rope basket that will start to form and making sure that you're feeding the rope right next to the last stitched section and if you need to go slower go slower centering your foot remember the markings on your foot make sure that's centered over the, the little valley between the two rope sections you're going to work your way around creating the sides of the basket. There I got a little carried away, went a little faster, and you can go faster if you so choose. But make sure you have control of everything else if, if you decide to do that. And if it gets out of control, slow up. Okay, and I'm getting close to where I started, so I'm going to trim my threads. Should have another one, but I guess not. Okay, making sure I have enough rope that's free. Okay, and continue. 
holding with your left hand the base of the of the row hole close up to the machine. to stop for any reason to make adjustments go for it just uh, be mindful of where your uh, basket is and how it's feeding and being careful that you keep the center of the foot centered over both of the ropes. If you need to get your, um, your stiletto out to make sure it stays in there, you need to go ahead and take those uh, precautions and utilize those tools. You can see how it's starting to curl up here to form the sides of your uh, of the bowl. need to take a break because it's kind of you're sitting in one position and so you kind of get a little stiff too so it's like take breaks if you need to and always stop with the needle in the down position so that way if you do need to take some kind of uh, a break that you know you can resume at any time come back and uh, resume where you left off with the stitching continue on with stitching this and I'll see you um, in a little bit as soon as I get further up the side of my basket, the side of the basket is. We're coming close to the end now and so what we're going to do, we're going to backspace, okay? Okay, and then cut your thread. 
Okay. What I um, found to be a good idea is I took it off. Let's make sure. Our coasters fit, and they do. Okay, it looks pretty nice, doesn't it? I love it. Okay, so what I or did is I took it off, uh, and the coasters fit, so we're good there. What I did is I stitched the last inch or so again. So I repeated the stitch just to make sure that it had some reinforcement going on here. Okay. And we'll just repeat that last section. Okay. Let's go ahead and reinforce this with the repeat or the back stitch and then cut the thread and remove it. Okay. Then of course we can cut our any loose threads that you might have back here. And that's all good. And then um, we have to get our scissors. Hold on a second. Our nice sharp scissors. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut a length approximately maybe 18 inches or so, something like that. And I'm going to cut it. We're going to just end it right there. Okay. Now we have to determine how we want um, the holder. If you want a holder, <coughs> like we did on this basket, what I did is, so if I did it like that, I, uh, I went like this, formed my little loop, and then I took some hot uh, gun glue and I glued this last strip to the first going around but before you do that I would I would glue back here first back on this section right here to hold it in place once you do that you know you got that shaped hold it in place and then you're going to proceed with gluing all the way around the outer edge of that there loop and I'm just gonna use some pins for right now oops pins get stuck on everything I'm just gonna pin this up to hold it in place so that you can get the visual of what I was doing something like that and that's all gonna be glued in place and then on the back side what I'm gonna do is I'm going to Oops, gotta get my scissors. Okay. And once you get this all situated and all glued in place, glued in place first. And then what you do is cut this section an angle. Cut it at an angle, something like this. Because you want it to be tapered, okay? Oops, sorry. You want that to be tapered. And you can use some um, hot gun glue and hold that in place as well, okay? Then you're going to glue that down If this is making any sense, it should be. Okay, so you're going to glue that down and it's going to stay in place. I'm just using pins here for the time being. I have to get my glue gun all heated up. And then when everything is said and done, that's how it should look in the end. 
and then for your coasters, you know, and like I told you where to, to, to quit with the coasters, you're going to follow the exact same rules when you're embroidering on those coasters that we did on the, the inside of that bowl, okay? You're going to line it up with that uh, centered right at, you know, with that beam light centered right at the very center, okay? And you're going to stitch out your design. Okay, and then um, what I did is, this is what the design looks like on the back side. It doesn't look bad at all, I don't feel, okay? But if you're um, the type of person that wants to cover that, that's fine. You can cover it with some... Um, some felt, just glue some felt to the back side of it. You know, use some fabric glue and put it on the, the back side. That's about a five inch diameter circle that you would put on there. Okay. And then you're finished. Okay. I hope you guys enjoyed this project, you know. Um, if you have any questions, you can always call uh, Annette or Phil at uh, uh, Phil Sewing in uh, Washington, Missouri, and they would be happy to help you. Uh, and any of the supply lists, uh, the rope was um, purchased uh, locally. You could buy it on Amazon as well. Uh, the thread, uh, Annette and uh, Larry have... Um, many different threads that you can choose from to stitch it and also for embroidery purposes and you might want to check with them for some of their thread options that they have. Uh, sewing needles as well. I use 7511 uh, embroidery needle in the for the machine for sewing and also for embroidery. Uh, what else did I use? Um, if you need a nice new pair of, of scissors as well. I know that they have a lot of scissors there to choose from so you need a sharp pair when you cut that rope you know to get you know a nice finish on that okay uh, let's see what else um, needles threads mm, machine you know and the design itself was a design that was built into the uh, Solaris vision you know the upgraded Solaris and also in the new in uh, vision that design is in the, the new category um, under I think it was category eight okay so go ahead try some of those designs uh, as well because they're, they're really fun and I think it did a really good job with this so until next time you know I just wish you all happy sewing and uh, we'll see you um, the next video okay thank you